Advent Conspiracy is a long-standing tradition of Imago Day community where um, we enter into the Advent season around four unique tenets and a vision um, of what Christmas means. Um, our culture tells us that Christmas is about consumerism and about buying the newest and the best and the most. And we know that the Christmas story is about uh, our God who gave himself to the world. And so the four tenets are um, arranged to help us live it out. And so we have um, worship fully, we have spend less, give more, and love all. And the ideas behind those with spend less is that we don't enter into the story of American consumerism um, and that we choose to spend less so that we can save that money um, to love all with and to give to needs in our city and in our world. Um, the tenet of give more is that we would give more relationally of ourselves to the people that we love, to the people we're buying gifts for. And then worshiping fully is that we would remember the story of our God who gave himself to us and that we would enter intentionally into spaces where we choose to worship him with our entire life. If we just relegate giving to be just an act or a behavior or something that we do versus something that we are or something that we express, Advent actually when we become people who reach out to other people and to love others, when we do that, then we participate in what God does with us in blessing us because the act of reaching out to others is an act of blessing. I was telling somebody the other day that we receive from God like this and then we bless like that. And when we reach out to other people, it is an act of blessing as opposed to simply an act of just giving something. Um, so this year we're going to continue with our tradition of doing giving trees and normally those trees are in our lobby and you get to walk up to them and choose which of the three um, sort of ministry arenas you want to take part in that year. They're all going to be digital this year. Um, you'll be able to go on our website and see the three opportunities for giving. This year we've focused in on three specific needs. Um, one is for kids that are involved in HALA mentoring program. Um, one is for, it's called Tens for Teens, and it's $10 gift certificates for um, teenagers in the foster care system. And the goal is that every teen in the foster care system in the PDX area would get some of their own spending money to spend in this holiday season. And then we'll be creating um, new beginnings bags for moms and dads who have served their sentence at one of our um, local prisons and jails and um, will be released in this coming year to um, begin this new season of their life. And the other two things that we're calling um, our community to in regard to Giving Trees this year is, after you buy the present, we're asking you to pray for that individual. And you may never meet that individual, but that individual is a real person with a real life, real family members, real needs. And our prayers matter for those people. So we're gonna ask you to pray for those people. And then the third step is that you would opt in that in the months of January, February, March, you would walk with pastors and leaders in this area to learn and pray together about how God wants us to step into these spaces. Well, the Water Project is something that we have, for the last, I guess, since 2016, we've asked our people to participate in helping to bring water to places in Kenya, in Kenya specifically, where there's very little, if no water. But more than that, we've asked our people to connect with the people in Kenya. And it's, it's not just water, water that we're giving, but it's living water that we are giving to them and they are giving to us. So we have family in Kenya where we uh, participate with the Water Project and with local leaders on the ground in Kenya to actually bring water to different communities. Catherine. I'm Alan. I'm Janet. And we love Portland and Western Kenya. You can go to our website and you can give to the Advent Conspiracy offering. You can also see some of the projects that we've already funded and you can see the ones that are earmarked to be funded in 2021. And that giving starts on the 29th of November.
Hey, Mago Day. It is so good to be with you this Sunday. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with family and friends, even though it was smaller. Uh, we're so excited about Advent. Advent is one of those seasons in our church calendar that for Imago has become a really sweet season for us. Particularly in the midst of 2020 as we enter into uh, the end of what has been a really long, really difficult year. This year, our theme is praying between the Advents. And, and what I mean by that is, as we, the people of God, live between the first coming of Christ, where he brought us salvation, and the second coming of Christ, as we look forward to the fulfillment of his kingdom, we are the people who live in between these two Advents. And we are a people who live with longing. And, and so when we say praying between the Advents, these are uh, chances for us to gather, to hear wonderful stories of how God is using us as we heard about Hala and Nomi now, but also to form prayers to pray during this Advent season. Uh, what I want us to do for this week is, is consider the prayer, Come Lord Jesus, as the people of God look, uh, longed for the first coming of Christ, what Advent really has traditionally been is a season of longing, of anticipation, and of fulfillment. I want us to turn to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11 gives us insight 700 years before Jesus came of a promise that the prophet spoke. And the promise was a coming Messiah who would set the world right. And here's what it says in Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 4. It says, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy, and with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. The branch that will shoot up from the stump of Jesse is Jesus. And it's pointing to the fact that Jesus in his first coming was the promised king on David's throne, the anointed one. And the anointed one that would come as a ruler over his people and be that branch that bears much fruit with wisdom and understanding and counsel and might and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And Jesus is that king. When Jesus came uh, as the king that was promised, he is the king of wisdom and understanding for, for us, his people. He is the king of counsel and might. He is the king with the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the king who delights in the fear of the Lord. And that phrase, fear of the Lord, it means reverence. It means a, a sense of awe and worthiness that we live before God with. And Jesus in his first coming established his kingdom that you and I might share in that spirit of wisdom without fear. And we would be delighting in the fear of the Lord. We hear this in the New Testament. Ephesians 1, Paul says, I keep asking the God of our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father that would give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that you would know him more. That's the spirit that came on Jesus, the branch of Jesse, and that he gave to us his people. Second Timothy says, for the spirit of God gave us is not one that makes us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. Jesus came with not only a spirit to give us salvation and the knowledge of him, but also to pronounce his divine blessing on those the world has dismissed. This prophecy says that he will, he will judge the needy and the poor, and he does that. We know how Jesus has decided for the poor and the needy. Matthew 5 tells us that he blesses the poor in spirit. 
And his decision is that theirs is the kingdom of God. He blesses those who mourn, and his decision and judgment is that they will be comforted. He blesses those who are meek, and his decision on their behalf is that they will inherit the earth. And the hunger, those who hunger will be filled. Those who are merciful will be shown mercy. Those who are impure in heart will see God. The peacemakers will be called the children of God. The persecuted, uh, because of righteousness, will get the kingdom of heaven. Jesus came and he judged and he decided and his ruling was that the, those the world has forgotten are the ones that he is for. His gospel broke into the world like a sword from his mouth where he convicted us of sin and pulled back the curtain on evil. And with the same breath breathed life by his spirit into those who believe Life everlasting, the end of wickedness. And as he speaks judgment on earth, Jesus' kingdom has come. And for you and I, we are the recipients of that peace of the kingdom, that salvation that Israel longed for that came through the person of Jesus Christ. And yet Isaiah's prophecy paints a picture of the kingdom yet to come in Verses 4 through 9, we continue that he says, the wolf, the wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together. And like a child, a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear and the young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox and the infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put his hand in the viper's nest and they will neither harm nor destroy on God's holy mountain for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That is the kingdom of that is to come. That is the time that we today pray for, that we today long for, when he will set the world right once and forever. And I don't know about you, but this year, I know for you it has taken its toll, and it has taken its toll on so many. We've lost loved ones. We've suffered. We've lost jobs, right? It's been a, it's been a year of pain, and we are not ignorant of that pain. But we are the people who look forward to and long for the day when this world that groans now will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. A world where Jesus will make decisions quickly on behalf of the needy and justly on behalf of the poor. He will rule with righteousness that balances every scale beyond human measurement. Justice and righteousness will be his eyes and his ears. He, will, he has rendered his verdict for the poor. He will overthrow false kings, empires, and false gods. When the world comes to be the way it is supposed to be, it is a world where even the animals will not fear one another, predator and prey living peaceably together, the vulnerable and the weak living without fear. This is a world where children with all innocence and vulnerability can rule without danger or resistance. A young boy can easily lead this extraordinary herd of animals that once would have eaten each other, but now follow the child in peace. A world made right, a world made new. Revelation chapter 21, it says, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. That is the promise that we look forward to. The prophet is describing entirely new creation. The same as Paul told the Corinthians had come upon them, but was still to come. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. It's the same as the original creation, but on a higher plane. 
meaning there will be the same animals, but they have new natures, making them entirely new creations, just as we have experienced that change in Christ. So the world is heading to a final state. And the reason the world will be like that is because the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. In the same way you know the Lord, and you will know him fully and be fully known by him, so too will the bear and the dog and the mountain and the flower know the Lord the way it knows instinct and territory and when to eat and when to, to, to flower and when to hibernate. So the earth will know the Lord and be filled with his knowledge experientially knowing the living God. And you ask, where is this world we long for, right? When you think back about the pain and the challenges of this year, one of the questions that I think some believers slip into, maybe all of us, I know for me at times, and the question is, are we uh, the abandoned people of God that, yes, Jesus came and he gave us his spirit and he transformed our hearts and is still doing that, but... But it, when it comes to the world, this world of chaos, shall we just simply hope in heaven and simply try to survive our days on earth? Are we left to our own devices so that we just should yield to the powerful and the rich and to the hopelessness and the despair? Have we, his people, been forgotten? Is that our longing? And I think for some of us, when we talk about longing, that's the longing that we tend to attach ourselves to. That we are just an abandoned people and God, where are you? But that is not at all the longing that, that the next advent points to. We don't long as the abandoned ones, but we long like Mary longed when she carried Jesus in her womb. We long for the world to come. We bear in our body the very spirit of the King who has come. We taste on our tongues the delight of heaven and we swell with hope because righteousness is what he has made us. We drink his own sweet spirit of love today as a newly engaged couple dreams of their wedding day while gazing into each other's eyes. That is how we long. We do not long like abandoned children. We long like a hopeful mom is about to give birth. And while the world groans waiting for her redemption, we join with those groans, that desire that more of this glory would shine within us. We weep tears of mourning, but we do it knowing it's not the way it should be. And we wipe those tears away with a confidence that our tears will soon be no more. We bury our loved ones in the depths of the earth, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, while we look to the horizon when the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those left alive will meet him in the air and be with the Lord forever. And so the church, in even a year like 2020, is a church that sings like Mary with heaven kicking in our belly, growing strong inside of us. We pray like Mary, be it done unto me according to thy will in humility and anticipation that one like us might be brought into so large a hope. We dance like Mary, praying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. We dance to the rhythms of a world made right so that justice would shine like the dawn and righteousness like a new day. We sing and shout his name, Alpha and Omega, that the poor might have plenty and the needy might be filled. This is our time between the Advents. And so, brothers and sisters, we pray with open eyes and open hearts, aware that the world isn't the way it's supposed to be. But we pray to the one who has come. 
with his kingdom and who dwells within us and who reigns over all. And we know that the promise, as Second Peter tells us, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That God, even in his waiting, is gracious and merciful. The world needs her king. And so let us pray for his coming. Let us grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, this Advent, as we live between the Advents, we pray, come Lord Jesus. Would you come and bring your kingdom to bear on earth as it is in heaven? Amen. We're going to respond now with communion and singing. And I just want to invite you to take a minute, wherever you are watching this, and um, really prayerfully ask God what he's speaking to you today as you enter this Advent season. And we're praying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Um, let's just open our hearts to God this morning and um, prepare the way for Jesus in this season. I want to invite you again, wherever you are, if you have communion elements, um, to grab those now. And if you don't, that's okay too. Uh, this is a time to really just be prayerful. So you could take that posture of communion, even if you're not participating with some elements in your home. Um, let's just prayerfully go to Jesus together. You there, us here, we're together in this. Uh, so let's take a minute and pray. And then we're going to sing a song that has been a favorite for a lot of us for many years. Um, just asking, asking our Redeemer to come again. God, we long for you every day. We feel that longing in the world around us and in our own hearts. And I pray that this season, as we enter a December that is... Um, unlike any other December, that you would point us to your son, to your word, to your light, to your uh, love letter, to your people, the way that you incarnated and came to reveal yourself to us, reveal yourself to us. God, I ask that um, you would prepare our hearts to really accept that and acknowledge that this year in a new way. Come, Lord Jesus, come into our lives once again. We pray. Amen.
people in 